Hello, this is Zack Sabre Jr., the favourite and only son of Zack Sabre. You are watching Ambi. Cheerio. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi and I would like to welcome you to our interview with Zack Sabre Jr. Hello. Hello. How are you? Oh, I'm delightful, yeah. I just want to say thank you for taking the time to join me. Thank you for having me. We just watched some incredible matches that you took part in for Smash Wrestling and the WCPW Pro Wrestling World Cup. How are you feeling right now? Oh, it's, uh, you know, just energized. Um, like I just had a great chiropractor session. So, yeah. <laughs> Michael Elgin, yeah. It's a, a lot of bones were cracked. A lo lot of bones were cracked. Elgin is such a thoughtful, thoughtful chap that he decided <laughs> to realign my spine. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm great. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed myself tonight. Well, you've been wrestling since your early teen years, but what was it initially that drew you into the ring? I honestly can't remember anything other than wrestling now. Like, I started training when I was 14, so that's over half my life now. Um, I just remember watching wrestling and, and only being able to think about wanting to do it. Like, there was not a specific moment I can't think of. I genuinely can't remember a time where I didn't watch wrestling and or wanted to be a wrestler. Yeah. Well, you've wrestled for a lot of different federations over the years, different promotions, but you recently joined up with New Japan Pro Wrestling. You had a debut there, so was that a federation that you've been wanting to work with for a while? Absolutely. I, uh, so I grew up watching uh, you know, all wrestling in the UK. Uh, WF and WCW were on uh, TV in the UK. I was lucky enough to go to some local shows watching British wrestling, so I just love wrestling. Uh, but then when I first started training when I was 14, um, I'd already kind of fallen in love with the Japanese wrestlers in WCW. And there was you know, obviously a few in uh, WF, Takamichi Noko and, and Dick Togo, Kai and Tai were all there. But I remember watching Jushin Liger in WCW and just uh, falling in love. So when I started training, there was you know, so many young uh, kids kind of at the time in 2002. So there was so many tapes and I uh, yeah, got to watch kind of New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, to begin with. So I, I decided when I was 14 that I wanted to wrestle for, for New Japan. And then uh, took me took until I was 29. But I think... Uh, <laughs> you got there. Yeah, yeah, I got there. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, yeah, just kind of just weave my way in, you know, for a couple of years. Well, it's been amazing following your career and just seeing where your wrestling has taken you. Like you recently had your debuts, and I believe it was Peru, but also Mexico. Yeah, uh, this year has been uh, a lot of firsts. Been, been insane. Yeah, I uh, I one hundred percent should have chosen Spanish over uh, French <laughs> um, in high school um, because I can't remember any French either. But also, I've been to Costa Rica. Uh, Chile, Peru and Mexico in the first couple of months this year and they all seem to uh, speak Spanish and I definitely do not so <laughs> I've been very embarrassed and very humble in everyone's attempts to uh, to make an effort to speak English to me um, I yeah I put a lot of effort into learning Japanese but I probably only sound like a, uh, a five-year-old but that's a kind of isolated language as well so probably need to get some Spanish apps on my phone I think maybe where would you love to still perform that you have yet to? Uh, well, I mean, I actually, uh, like South America has been really, uh, really amazing. I think the, the, the kind of power of independent wrestling now, I kind of went there just, you know, ready to have fun and kind of make a good impression. And so many people were already kind of aware of, of me and what I'd been doing. So I think just uh, it was even more important for me to go there and like show that someone someone like me is not just kind of going for a pseudo holiday and, and <laughs> going to half ass it that I want to show kind of what, what a real kind of traveling independent wrestler is and just want to work hard and, uh, and just really kind of immerse myself in those countries. So I want to go everywhere. The most obscure places I will wrestle. <laughs> uh, I'm, you know, I'm from a kind of very small island in, uh, in England. So for me to travel to all these places is just mad. Uh, you know, I kind of went to Spain on holiday as a kid, and that was uh, and that was exciting. So, to travel around the world for uh, something that I love, I'm uh, very spoiled. You recently posted this really nice comment towards Yoshinari, where you were talking about you loved training and working with him, and just how he's really helped you along with your career. So, what is it about that man that kind of you connected to so much? Um, he's someone that, <clears throat> when I was watching kind of uh, All Japan, that just stood out as such a unique wrestler. Like he had such a kind of uh, I don't know, just such a large in life character and just seemed kind of independently minded in the way that he was. So when I first went to Prorosing Noah, you know, everyone kind of told me like, you know, that's someone that, you know, is so hard to win over and that, you know, you really kind of had to, to work hard to kind of impress him. So then kind of after a, a year or so, uh, 
you know, he was kind of complimenting me and kind of giving me advice. And then we were teamed together. And then a lot of the Japanese wrestlers were like, oh, you know, it's going to be difficult. It's not going to be interesting, kind of, you know, teaming with you. And then kind of after a few months, we, you know, on the Japanese wrestling's tour base. So we'd be on the road for a couple of weeks and we'd go out for dinner. He'd take me out for dinner every night and like just connected. A bond so, just grew. bond, yeah. And I think like wrestling's really uh, ageless because, you know, I was in my 20s, he was kind of in his late 40s. But just, you know, we completely connected on, on kind of topics outside of wrestling too. He's a very kind of, a self-aware man he kind of keeps up with current affairs and I think we had very similar outlooks on a lot of things and I think just his enthusiasm he'd been wrestling 30 years and just every night just wanted to put you know so much effort in and kind of uh and just help and paid attention to the shows that wasn't kind of someone that was just kind of you know an old vet and he's kind of just doing his match and doesn't really care so I think just like that example that he set both in and out of the ring uh and just to kind of have someone who I respected so much and achieved so much kind of uh, become such an advocate for me. I think it's one of my greatest achievements. When you posted about that, you shared this fantastic photograph of yourself <laughs> where you had this kind of like scene, uh, emo hair going yeah. on, total mop top. Yeah, so I've got like a WhatsApp group with my, uh, my uni friends and uh, basically it's just them mocking uh, me throughout the years. How and old yeah. were you there? Uh, uh, not, yet, not as young as it should be. <laughs> I don't know, probably... That was probably like, I'd finished uni, so like 2009. Okay. 2000, yeah, 2009. Uh, yeah, I had that for a good decade. And I was obviously aware I had long hair, but it's not until you get uh, like this haircut that you... You look back and realise. Look, well, look back instantly at the time and just think, oh, oh I probably should have done this uh, about nine and a half years ago. But <laughs> I, rode, I rode out the wave, I boarded... The indie and emo scene. Um, so, luckily, all of the photographic evidence of that now is on the internet. So, uh, for everybody to for enjoy. everybody to enjoy, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's a natural a natural hat. <laughs> I uh, yeah, I couldn't wear hats because I had one on permanently. Um, yeah, we'll uh, look back fondly on that. But yeah, so I just thought I'll, I'll like I'll own that myself. So before that other people find before it. Before other people find it, yeah. It's but a good so yeah, I await the uh, the other. It's just a nightmare. Wrestling's incredibly difficult. At the best of times, just kind of sweat, and I, for a slim person, I sweat so much. I don't know why. And then it's just a mop, and it's remarkable that I managed to wrestle <laughs> the way that I did with it. I went through the same thing where I kind of I had the bangs and the long hair and it was all very layered and it was because of the music I listened to like I was really into the more emo type of music the alternative rock was that why you ended up getting that yeah I think so I think a little bit of it especially when I started out wrestling kind of uh, you know what the image of a wrestler and kind of you know that kind of stereotype I think I was kind of such a big music fan and I was younger and I was kind of a bit stubborn to want to be myself so yeah I think uh, I, I think you uh, some of it's unintentional um, I don't know I can't even I can't even think of why I had that hair but I definitely had it so we can, we can guarantee that who are some of the bands that you dig listening to now whether just when you have downtime or when you're getting amped to go into the ring uh, right now uh, I've got kind of into uh, a lot of like neoclassical stuff so I really like a, a label called Erase Tape so like a composer called Max Richter uh, as I've kind of like I found Aphex Twin when I was about 16 so I kind of started to get into a lot of electronic music so I listened to a lot of kind of I guess electronica or, or techno like Nathan Flake and Fortet have always been kind of two of my favourite um, artists um, yeah I, for me like I grew up in kind of like indie and shoegaze you know the Smiths mm -hmm. My Bloody Valentine and all that kind of stuff but I kind of felt like electronic music and a lot of labels, there's like a label called Lies in New York. I kind of feel like some of the most punk labels and like the like the punk ethos is in techno and electronic music now. I kind of feel that it's so much more uh, kind of about that you know boundaryless. So I like Lies. I like Opal Tapes in the UK. Um, yeah, I still a big shoegaze fan. Yeah. Like I've been so happy with all the revivals. So I got to see my buddy Valentine <laughs> in uh, in London, and like that second record was great. That's awesome. Slow Dive and Ride have yeah. uh, have done so well. Um, I don't know. Let's see. I have to make playlists. Well, yeah, I try to because uh, I travel so much. I try to limit myself on how much records I buy. Like I'll let myself buy a record or two. Yeah, like, you have to each each where I go, yeah. So like kind of a lot of them are stored at my mum's house, but 
So I make a bunch of playlists and then I still try and contribute. So I make month by month playlists. So let's see what's in. You have a lot. In yeah, it's over the top. <laughs> so May. Oh, I mean the new Kendrick album's great. Uh, I really like the Run the Jewels album from this year. What else we got? Uh, Shed put a new record out. Mm. You mentioned a couple of rap acts there. Yeah, I like a lot of I like a lot of hip hop and grime. Like I really like uh, I liked all the Odd Future guys. I really like El Sweatshirt. Uh, I mean the grime grime scene in the UK. It's kind of being called like a revival, but it never went away. I think just kind of the rest of the world has uh, has kind of paid attention to it. But actually, earlier today, uh, Jamie, my favorite uh, BBK rapper, uh, posted a picture like he met uh, the late the leader of the Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn. Um, so yeah, that's probably my dream, dream, uh, dream dinner dates. <laughs> Just go to a because uh, Jamie Corbyn's a vegetarian, Jamie's vegan, so uh, go out for a lovely, uh, lovely meal with those two. That might be, uh, yeah, might, might be my main dream, <laughs> dream meal. Yeah. How would you say you are as a rapper? Because I'm assuming you listen to this stuff. I mean, oh, I'm guilty of so, it. I sing along. So Japan and what well, all of Asia, but definitely uh, Japan loves karaoke. So of all the years that I spent in Japan, and I'm I'm an awful singer, but also I don't get uh, you know take much joy out of singing. But the Japanese to say that you don't like karaoke to a Japanese person means like you don't want to sing loads of karaoke. It just means like oh you don't like karaoke, so you'll okay. sing one or two songs. So uh, when uh, one of my Australian friends Jonah Rock was uh, over, we would destroy uh, "Swimming Pools" by Kendrick, and then usually after that. The Japanese would uh, quite happily not ask us to do a, uh, another <laughs> song. So that's pretty bad. Uh, oh, some really bad karaoke experiences. Me and Eddie Edwards once tried to do Hotel Yorba by the uh, by the White Stripes. Did you? How'd that go down? So bad. And like, you have the benefit. Like, I can get away with like doing Oasis and Blur, like with the accent. Like, it yeah. obviously sounds so awful. But Japanese people, it kind of at least I can make do with some horribly faux Cockney accent. But yeah, Hotel Yorba. <laughs> just halfway through. Just I'm, I'm we just thinking about we it just right look. Now. Yeah, if you ever see Eddie Edwards, just ask him about that. I hope there's not video footage of that. <laughs> that that might ruin my career. <laughs> you know, I, I, de I de yeah, I definitely had no. I, there was no reason for me to bring that up. But yeah, I'm I mean, happy you did. I can't sing at the better times. Uh, yeah, I don't think right right now. I think my my hip hop career might be on on hold. But if uh, if BBK do want to sign me, then I think you know if it's going to be what like hip hop or grime, I think I can. I'll get into the grime scene. You can make do. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm vegan. Jamie's vegan. I think that's pretty much all you need. <laughs> that's that's the key just, to just, the door. Just rapping about just like plants and <laughs> animals and just like the kind of feeling of superiority you get when you're vegan. You have to tell everyone about it multiple times a day. I actually went most of this interview without bringing it up. So I mean that's quite. Uh, yeah, we came pretty far. Yeah, yeah. It was burning inside. Just had to. <laughs> Just had to tell it, but yeah, definitely can't rap. In short, cannot rap. Cannot rap. Yeah. Well, let's wrap things up. Is there anything you would like to leave with your fans who will be viewing? Uh, no, I just want to uh, want to say that it still kind of blows my mind that I can come to Canada and uh, not only kind of be so warmly received, but just be kind of part of something that's so positive. I think independent wrestling is really kind of becoming something that I feel everyone feels welcome to I think obviously the the idea is you come and you can scream and you can shout at people but I think I really hope that that all people feel welcome and, and not kind of uh, alienated or kind of put off by like the content or I feel like independent wrestling is just about coming kind of meeting people shouting at you know shout, shouting at idiots in spandex having fun and not feeling alienated or ostracized by whatever you're you know your your personality is so i think yeah i think uh it's uh it's a great time for person i couldn't agree more that's extremely well put thank you so much for joining me today thank you it's my pleasure Cheers. and remember to everyone viewing you can visit us at musicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews features videos and so much more see you next time